Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Temi. I make videos about careers, education and tech. I give tips on how to leave uni with more than a degree and how to get somewhere you actually want to be. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing the pros and cons of doing a BEng and an MSc versus an MEng degree. I initially wanted to go down the MEng route alone and then I actually ended up doing the BEng and MSc routes. So I have a good idea of what both entail and the pros and cons of each. And I'm also also going to include employer opinions if you're concerned about that as well. I'm going to be using the term chartership in this video. I'm not going to explain what it is, but I will put a definition of it quickly up on the screen now. So a BEng stands for Bachelor of Engineering, and essentially it's the undergraduate standard degree for an engineering degree. You can also do a year in industry with the Bachelor of Engineering route, which I did as well, which adds on an extra year to your degree. If you are thinking about doing engineering at university, I would highly recommend signing up for the MEng course, even if you're not interested in the MEng, just because it is easier to go off the MEng and go to a BEng instead of signing up to do the MEng. With the BEng and MSc route, if you're on the MEng course, you have to tell your uni you want to stop at the BEng and graduate with the BEng. As long as your BEng and MSc degree is accredited by the relevant engineering institution, so for me it's the Institution of Chemical Engineers, as long as it's accredited, the route is perfectly viable. The MEng route is an integrated master's, which means you do your BEng and you basically do a master's as well, but it's all compiled into one degree. Unis do encourage you to apply for this degree on the outset, just because, as I mentioned before, it's easier to come off it than to go on it. And again, just like the BEng and MSc, as long as the degree is accredited, you should be fine for chartership. You can also do a year in industry if you want to do it, just like the BEng degree as well. So if you're doing the BEng and MSc route, the amount of time it will take you minus your holidays is 39 months. So that is three times nine months worth of teaching plus 12 months for your MSc. If you are doing the MEng route, it will literally just be four times nine months of teaching and that will be 36 months. Now I'm going to go into the pros and cons of each route and I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible. If you didn't enjoy your undergrad in engineering, doing an MSc means that you can pivot subjects. So either do a different type of engineering through an MSc or do just a different subject entirely. And this is if you don't really care about being chartered. For example, if I did an undergrad in chemical engineering, I could have done my MSc in clean energy or environmental engineering, something that's related but isn't straight chemical engineering. You can actually get into a better uni which would boost your CV. So if you're doing your course maybe at a uni that's not a Russell group or you do want to get into one of the top unis for your course, maybe it's Cambridge, maybe it's Birmingham, maybe it's LSE, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to get into a better uni to really boost your CV and finish off uni like really strong and have a good name in your CV, then that's a benefit as well. MSc degrees are for people that are from different disciplines. So if it's an engineering MSc, you might get people who are from pure science degrees. And because of that, it means a lot of the fundamentals of your subject are actually retaught. So it actually means that you can actually leave with a better understanding of your subject if you didn't feel like you really understood it at undergrad level. Contrary to, I think, popular belief, what I used to think, I used to think that doing an MSc might close the door to chartership. But as long as your MSc does fulfill the additional teaching requirement for accreditation from the engineering body that you're part of, it's completely fine. It does not close the door to chartership. It's a bit more slower paced. I feel like I actually have a life versus my final year of my BEng degree. So that I really like that aspect of it. This pro is more specific to my uni, but I get to do in modules that I'm really, really interested in. So I get to do modules like carbon capture and clean energy, finance modules, the list goes on. Moving to a new uni might expose you to new opportunities and learning new modules that you never would have learned if you were stayed at your current institution. There is also no detriment to how employees look at your CV. A BEng and an MSc that's accredited is equivalent to an MEng. Some traditional firms or companies may want to see the traditional MEng, but the majority of jobs out there don't actually care. They just want to know that you've got an engineering degree and that's it. For the job I'm starting to work out this September, I didn't even need to do a master's for it. So people actually choose to reapply to go to uni again if they're doing an MSc. So the people that you're going to be likely to be mixing with as a postgraduate student 
are probably going to be people that are very, very focused and actually want to be there versus people that just want to hurry up and finish their MEng degree. So that's really important for group projects and things like that. However, the BEng and MSc route is three months longer, like I mentioned earlier. And the downside of that is that it's a three months before you start a job or before you start working. So that means that you may not get a final summer of freedom, summer to travel or to do a part-time job to save up money. You don't get that time, but people that are on the MEng do. Also related to that, the course is three months longer, which means you actually have, I think for my course, it's actually double the amount of modules you would have if you were on the MNG route, um, which means that you get to learn more, but it also means that, yeah, you have more exams and people that are on the MNG route, obviously. If you wanted to do an internship between your BNG year and your MSc year, but also do the MSc, it means that you actually have to be making applications to companies and institutions at the same time. And that could mean that your time is very, very tight at the beginning of your final year, which is the hardest year. One of the most important cons is if you are taking out a student loan to help you fund your MSc, it means that you are no longer eligible for the undergraduate student loan plus maintenance loan. Now you have to take out a postgraduate loan, which means that you don't get a maintenance loan and it may not actually cover the full cost of your degree. So it may mean that you have to search for scholarships, you may have to live at home, you may have to fork out some extra money in work to be able to afford that degree if your parents aren't paying for you. MSc degrees are usually more expensive than undergraduate degrees. So if you're a home student, undergraduate degrees will tend to be around £9,000. My MSc is actually £14,000, so that's quite a, quite a hike up. Now onto the pros of doing an MEng degree. It is a very traditional route to chartership and if you want to work for a firm or a company that is very engineering focused, it's ideal. If you like your uni, you like your friends, you like your lecturers, you know, you, you like the vibe of your uni, then obviously that's a pro to stay there and just finish off in all one go. It's also faster, three months faster to be precise. In your final year of an MEng degree, you'll find that also that it's more specialised than the content of an MSc degree and that's because your uni isn't going over the fundamentals because they've been with you since your first year so you'll find that the stuff the content is harder and it's more specialized and you actually get to learn more specifics and again paralleling with the b engine msc this does count as an undergraduate student loan so you get to do the whole four years or five if you're doing the industry and have that covered with maintenance loan as well if you've gotten a good group of friends doing your undergrad degree people might actually graduate at the b -Eng stage and you might be left alone maybe for the MNG stage. So that is a slight con of the MNG. It is quite long, so people do tend to like leave or drop out because it's quite, it, it feels, it's only one year, but it feels a lot longer than it is. So in summary, you've heard me speak a lot and these are my final thoughts on which route you should choose. If you want your degree to be over as soon as possible and you still want to be chartered, I'd recommend the MNG degree just because you don't have to spend that first year of your third year applying for new things and it sort of distracts you from your actual work. So that's what I'd recommend. If you don't want to be chartered or even if you do and you just want to expand your horizons and have a better uni experience if your experience at your undergrad wasn't quite good, Good. I'd recommend doing the BNG and MSc route because you can do an MSc in the engineering subject you want but experience it in a different uni. Or like I mentioned before, specialise in something that you're really interested in that you really feel is going to boost your CV. You could also go to a better uni or stay at your current university. You can do new modules, do modules in different subjects like finance which is really important for engineers actually which we don't get to learn a lot of at undergrad. As I mentioned I did the BNG and MSc route and for me personally I don't regret it. Even with all the that I mentioned of the BNG and MSc route of it being more complicated, more difficult, longer to do, I don't regret it. And that is because it's actually given me more than it cost me. If you want to hear more about my degree specifically, you can go watch this video where I basically rant about my degree um, and basically talk about the modules that I've been doing. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I make a new video. My upcoming videos are going to be very, very focused on internship applications, graduate job applications, what to do in assessment centres, personality types, the whole lot. So if you're interested, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video.